Today I'm going to go ahead and move from 7.0.0c to D version of ECSA Appliance due to high CPU utilization that people noticed. Um, and this is actually pretty evident right here. But let's go ahead and um, do the upgrade after briefly demonstrating the problem. So if we look here and we go to monitor this particular ECSA in my home lab, we'll see under performance overview, real time, things look okay at the moment. But let's go back in time for a bit. Okay, you can already see a cyclical thing going on with disk. And you can see some sluggishness here. All right, let's go back a week. That should be enough. And there you go. You'll see I upgraded from B to C. And I've given this VM four vCPUs, as I mentioned in a previous video, where I actually do the upgrade uh, to C. And I didn't keep the snapshot around very long. Probably should have, but anyhow, there was a workaround. And the workaround was as simple as disabling workload control plane, which keeps you from going into maintenance mode. Not ideal, but at least it got me out of the woods. But if I reboot the VCSA appliance, we go right back into that high CPU state. So let's go back to real time. And what we're going to see is the CPU is going to go right up again as soon as I start that service. So again, no need to go to the command line. You can do this right from VAMI. I'm pointing to the VCSA appliance, colon 5480, that's VAMI. And it's now started and healthy. So soon we'll see the real-time view showing us the problem again. Now, I don't really need to dwell on this because I know the fix. And that is to update to the latest version. So let's start staging that. Um, but I do want to capture first a CPU spike here. Now, how long it's going to take to show up? Not really sure. You'll notice that You can hit refresh here, but if there was data available and a new spike available, might have seen it already. Nope, that did speed things up a bit, and there's the spike. Okay, so there's a period of high impact, and then it goes down. It was even higher than I thought. So yeah, that's pretty nasty, and that's actually the machine I'm recording this on. It's a VM, a Windows 10 VM I'm recording this on. So it may even affect the uh, you know, performance a little bit my production workload, my VM that I care about more than VCSA even. So anyhow, you get the cyclical pattern. If we left it running for um, a while, you would see these spikes as well. So enough of that. We know the problem. Let's fix it. Now, would it be happy with that service stopped if I tried to do a VCSA upgrade? I don't know. I don't necessarily want to find out. I'll leave the machine in its normal state. It's done with that nasty initial spike. If I hit refresh here again, we probably see it's dropped off to something a little less severe. Not granular enough to see that yet. Well, actually, yeah, that's pretty intense. Wow. So that is interesting. Um, okay, so we're in a pretty odd state here. And I am thinking it's going to slow the upgrade process down. So I think most people in a lab probably went with what I did, stopped the service, and just kept their lab operating rather than going back to B, just left it at C, because it was quite workable with that. It just meant we couldn't go into maintenance mode again. Not a big deal. All right. And our CPU is back down again. So that's good. All right, we can do a snapshot, at least for now. Now, that's not going to be a valid way to kind of back up going forward. Uh, VMware's had some hints about this. Um, Snapshot-based backup programs won't be supported, but let me do one anyway, just in case things don't go well at all, and I need to just uh, revert to a snapshot. But that would be the last thing you'd want to do. You'd really want to restore from backup 
which I'm doing on a daily basis automatically. Okay, so we now have a snapshot just prior to going to VCSA 7.0.0D. Once that snapshot's done, let's uh, sort this here. Okay, creating snapshot, it says queued. Completed, nope, never mind. Completed, yep. Also, I'll point out that my specs are pretty beefy here. Let me just go ahead and show you that I saw some CPU exhaustion kind of error, so I bumped it up to 4 vCPU and 12 gig of RAM. Very beefy for a home lab, um, just a few dozen VMs. Right now I don't have some hosts attached that I've powered off and doing other things with, testing them right now, but let's get to it. Time to do an update. Now I have noticed a bug there. There you go, when you first bring up this page, I get this error. I already made note of that in my um, in a recent article um, that summarizes my presentation to this user group, where that's one of the, the little issues, uh, challenges I ran into. Um, it's not a big deal. Just ignore it because when you hit check updates, CD-ROM and URL, it's really more a confidence um, thing. Um, doesn't seem to have any side effects there. The error is gone, right? All right, now when I go to stage and install, it's gonna run a pre-upgrade check anyway. It's also gonna make me validate that I've done backups daily. And I can actually check those backups, as you'll see. So from here forward, it's just gonna be the same as my 70.0B to C upgrade article. It's not really gonna take 70 minutes. And I can actually go to backups. It nicely opens a new tab, doesn't disrupt what I was doing. Strangely, you do need to click on end time twice to get the reverse sort you're looking for, and you can see my machine was backed up just last night. So yes, I have backed up, and it's that simple. It downloads the code, and we can actually show that download. So this is my router being monitored for traffic, and it's pulling that code now, and that's going smoothly. At this point, I'll probably time-lapse this part of the video. Um, I'm just having a quick peek at what download server VMware is actually hitting with this VCSA appliance update. But anyhow, you get the point. Um, the bits are flying down right now. Uh, the speed is actually kind of modest at the moment. But we just simply wait for the update at this point. Now it looks like I accidentally clicked on another tab, so let's go back to here, and there we go. Okay, installation completed. Hit close. And we still get this error. That's not great no updates found that is good and all green happy checkboxes here status running and the new version is applied and the new build number all right interesting um, let's go ahead and continue to check the functionality so naturally we get a VM login screen here so the VCSA, or vSphere client, excuse me, the login to VCSA prompted me for credentials, of course, because the whole VM had rebooted. And now our CPU should be okay, and I might be able to back down to two vCPUs. Let's go to monitor here and go to overview. Naturally, we're going to see a spike during the upgrade. Hmm. 
So during the upgrade, you see it maxed out at 100% CPU. That's normal. What I'm not quite seeing is things settling down all the way down to pre, uh, 7.0.0 B levels. There we go. It just auto refreshed and we've got right down to where I want to be. 12% sure beats the much higher levels I was seeing. Like right there, 32%. That's a large improvement. There might be a little bit of housekeeping still going on because we just rebooted and updated. Not sure. Um, if, there we go. You just saw another reload. I didn't do that one. So it's updating with pretty good frequency. But as I bring this video in for a landing here, um, I want to remind viewers, you don't want to forget to delete your snapshot. So because my upgrade went well, and I have no intent to revert to the snapshot at this point, given I have better CPU utilization and my VCSA seems to be behaving okay, I could remove it now or in a few hours, but just don't forget to delete your snapshot before you forget that is affecting performance. You don't want to leave those around for many reasons, especially because reverting to a backup is actually a better supported way um, for the long haul for all subsequent 7.x releases. So you don't want to get used to snapshotting anyway. All right, forcing an update. I was kind of hoping to see the CPU settle back down. Then I'll feel more at ease that I'm really done here. Yes, I feel at ease that I'm done here. And depending on how things go, I might go back to two CPUs, two vCPUs, which I believe was the default for when I installed the VCSA appliance and told that I have a small environment. So hopefully you found this video helpful. I want to thank you for watching and for visiting Tinkertry, IT at home. Bye for now.